I don't have to do things alone. Uh, I started out by just, you know, being of service to other people and asking how I can help them because I didn't, you know, I was just starting out. I didn't have a big list. And I just met so many heart-centered entrepreneurs who generously offered their advice and I would help them. Just it, the community itself, like even as a solopreneur, you can't do things alone. You can't scale. You need help. And it's not just about you asking for help. It's about you giving help. Be, being of service is, is such a game changer. It makes you feel valuable and it helps other people feel valuable too. So I, I love it. I think um, collaborating is the way to go. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the show. Chuck Anderson here, and I am thrilled to have another amazing guest with me today. Uh, today, I have Lorraine Ellen Scott, and she has uh, some amazing things to share, some tips to share with us today. If uh, For all of you uh, entrepreneurs and business owners who are on a journey, and you're working hard, and you're trying so hard to make your vision and your mission a reality and there's the things that you do that go well and the things that you do that don't go well and there's stress and all of the things and mindset and just so many things that can happen that are just over and above our business. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So Lorraine, welcome to the show. Hi, Chuck. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Well, I was excited to see that uh, that you're going to be on a guest on my show, and I've been looking forward to this, and and we'll get to know each other uh, a little bit more uh, during this episode. So um, now I don't like to do other people's introductions for them. I've been on stage before where people have introduced me, and I'm like, really, you said that about me? That's not <laughs> that's not how I would do it, but okay. So I don't introduce people. I let you introduce yourself. So um, I think that's a great place to start, Lorraine, is uh, introduce yourself to the listeners uh, in terms of who you are and what you do, and we'll take it from there. Okay, great. Let the introvert introduce yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm a Reiki master teacher, first and foremost. I've been doing that for many years now, and I've actually pivoted into working with introverted entrepreneurs. So as an introvert, it was important for me to use specific tools and skills to have the energy and stamina to get myself out there. So I find that it's much, much easier to actually teach other people on how to do it as well. So I had students who wanted to, you know, put themselves out there and become practitioners and they had a tough time being empathic and a lot of them introverts you know we always attract like-minded people right so I found a way to just use a specific process to help them and it's it's been great because I really feel like I'm in my flow and I'm able to help those who really need it you know, um, the word that really stands out to me there is empathic. And, it, you know, it took me a long time to realize that that was something that is a gift I have as well. And I could always feel this energy. I always feel anxiety is what I called it. But really, um, once I got a chance to study it and learn it a little bit more, it wasn't always my energy that I was feeling. I was actually feeling other people's energy, especially anger. If anyone around me was angry, I could feel it, but it would come out as anger in me. I thought I was angry. And it took me a long time to realize, hey, wait a minute, this is not mine, or at least to check in is like, is this me? Or is this somebody else? Because and it, and it makes me wonder just how many others can feel other people's energy and not even realize that it's not them, it's somebody else's. Mm -hmm. You are so right. And I, it's interesting. I think we all are empathic. It comes down to vibration and we're all sensitive to it. Some of us can numb ourselves from it. Um, my ex had a lot of anger issues. So I learned early on to really, you know, insulate myself from that, but it can get to the point where you're too insulated that you feel nothing and that's not good either. But 
you're so right. It's going inward and asking, is this my stuff? You know, we think we're all moody teenagers and we're just flip flopping all over the place. But no, we're probably picking up on other people's stuff. That's that's what we do. It, it may sound like woo woo, but, you know, it's we're definitely social beings. So that we have to pick up those cues, even if we can't see the other person, we're picking up on those vibrations. Vibration is a great word as well. You hear people say, oh, I just have this vibe like something is off or something is great. And, you know, uh, I always now like to play around with that. So when I feel something that may or may not be me, I look around and just like who's around me and what what's what's going on right now. And sometimes it's in my local space. Sometimes it's much, much further away. But um you know, but uh, it's it's fun to play with that. It's a great concept of is this mine or is it someone else's? And if it's someone else's, who is it and what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how do I get rid of it? And and really, and we don't even really need to know. Once we know it's not ours, we can just switch it off. Yes, it's that simple. People think that it has to be difficult and and confusing, and it doesn't have to be. We can simply make that choice to just say. I'm closing that part down and the rest is not getting in. Mm -hmm. So empowering. And, you know, it's been, it's, it's been, you know, life changing for me, especially in the pursuit of growing my business to interpret energy correctly. Right. If, mm -hmm. if, if that's, if that's the right way to put it, but it's, you know, there's, we encounter energy all the time and encounter energy with my one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions, I encounter energy in my talks, when I'm at networking meetings, when I'm out and about. And, uh, and so how to use that to make better decisions in my business has been extremely helpful. Are you finding that too, with some of the people that you're working with, or even for yourself? Yes, absolutely. Especially, you know, trying to decide whether something's good good to do or not. You know, when you're first starting out, it's like everybody's like, you know, take my program, do this business thing. And you have to really discern what's best for you. So those feelings, those vibes, well, that's your intuition uh, talking as well. And it's, it's trusting what's coming through, trusting, is this something I need? Or is it just, you know, am I afraid of missing out if I don't have it? There's a lot of FOMO out there now, right? <laughs> <laughs> Quite a lot, actually. So this is a, this is a such an interesting topic, and I'm always curious. Um, you know, was this something that you realized at a young age that you had this gift, and it's always been this way, or was there a point, a turning point, where you had this realization, like, no, this is how it is, and and I really want to pursue this. I really want to go down this path. Well, I never thought of myself as empathic as I was growing up. I don't have one of those stories of, you know, just channeling the angels or, you know, talking to dead people and things like that. But it's probably when I first learned uh, how to do Reiki, which, you know, a decade and a half or so ago, that I realized I could look back and go, oh, I really was picking up on other people's energy or other people's emotions um, so retrospectively, I realized that I actually was, but I just couldn't put a finger on it. Same with being introverted. Like, I didn't really think of myself. People would tell me, you know, oh, you're shy and that sort of thing, which shyness isn't always an introverted trait, just so everybody knows. I'm a big advocate of, you know, teaching the masses that, that quiet, shy are not always <laughs> introvert traits. Well, I think sometimes the opposite is, is true. I mean, and 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 I invite our listeners to think of you if you've ever met that person who just can't stop talking and they're just talking, 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 and they are, it's almost like they're afraid of silence. Where mm -hmm. I am not afraid of silence. Like I can sit there and I can be silent and we could be sitting next to each other. Does it mean I don't like you? Absolutely not. It's just, it's just, it just is. It's okay, right? Uh, but I think others are like, oh, my God, there's silence. Uh, what do I do about this? I must say something and always keep talking. <laughs> yeah, people get awkward. They get they get nervous and uncomfortable. And some people will clam up, 
and not say anything. And other people will just yammer on because it's better than hearing their own thoughts in their head. <laughs> you know, then you start worrying, oh, you know, is there something wrong with me? Are they thinking bad thoughts of me? And we get too much in our head. We need to shift that, ground our energy and just focus on what matters. Mm -hmm. I think the awareness of this and, you know, I, some of our listeners might be nodding and going, yeah, exactly. This is how it is. And others might be hearing this for the first time going, what? Um, or even just expanding your awareness. But, you know, I want to share that it, it, it's been something that I have brought into my coaching practice, even though I'm a business consultant and a marketing consultant, there's a place for this because when I'm uh, and this just happened last week on a coaching session where I sensed there was something wrong. There was something going on. There was an energy that wasn't quite right. It was anxious. I did check in. It wasn't me. And so I asked some questions and, and, and this particular client, they were just right on the edge and there were tears and I'm like, you know what? It's okay. Just go there. Let's, let's, let's let this out. But it was the sense like, there was something going on that we needed to explore. And it led to like this wonderful breakthrough moment. First, that pressure release valve, like, because mm. they're not wanting to say anything, right? They're wanting to like, oh, you're my coach. I need to hold it all together. I need to be perfect. And I'm like, what's going on? What's up? And then, the, and then afterwards, amazing stuff, like this lightness and the creativity and the, almost like hitting the reset button yeah. right? where now I'm like refreshed and rejuvenated. And now I can go through the week. Whereas, you know, at the beginning of this, I was feeling horrible and now I feel amazing. And, um, and so I'm grateful for, first of all, picking up on that and allowing that person to have their moment. You know, that to me is the sign of a really good coach because even in business, it's not just about business. There's a human, there's a soul behind that business. And, and I work with entrepreneurs. So our life is our business. Like there, we're working every day of the week, maybe not all day, every day, but you know, that's what we do. And we have to intertwine our life with that. And that means addressing the emotions that we have all the time. So they don't build up to the point where we just have a breakdown. It's, it's really, it boils down to managing your energy, thoughts are energy, emotions are energy, it's all vibration. So I love that you do that and, and you honor that moment for your, for your clients so they can get past it because they're not going to take in any more information or advice from you when they're in the middle of that inner crisis. Well, it certainly didn't come naturally to me, but through increasing my awareness and in, in, increasing my personal growth and learning that there's, there, okay, yes, I can learn about business strategies, but I can also learn about just how everything works, right? And so it's all relevant. And, and, and so what I've been able to do is kind of bring that together and use that. And so we can be in the middle, middle of a business meeting, shed some tears, but have the most amazing breakthrough. How about that? So, um, yeah. and so, yeah, it, it was really fun. And I appreciate you saying that as well. Um, one of the things I want to make sure we touch on, and, and there's a couple of things uh, I know we want to share before we sign off. Um, the show and the theme of our show is obviously partnership and collaboration. And I, I just want to hear from you, like, how has partnering or collaborating uh, played a role in your business? Oh, it has been a, a game changer for me. Like I said, as an introvert, like last year, I got into the JV community joint venture. And it was like, oh, my goodness, I don't have to do things alone. Uh, I started out by just, you know, being of service to other people and asking how I can help them because I didn't, you know, I was just starting out. I didn't have a big list. And I just met so many heart centered entrepreneurs who generously offered their advice and I would help them. Just it, the community itself, like even as a solopreneur, you can't do things alone. You can't scale. You need help. And it's not just about you asking for help. It's about you giving help. Be, being of service is, is such a game changer. It makes you feel valuable 
and it helps other people feel valuable too. So I, I love it. I think um, collaborating is the way to go. I wish I knew it years ago. And, and and it took me a while to really embrace it as well. I mean, I always tell people, I you know, I grew up on a farm where my father and my grandfather always used to say, if you want something done right, you have to do it yourself. And so as a reformed or reforming do-it-yourselfer who, you know, still struggle from, you know, with, with certain aspects of letting other people do the things that I do and all of that. Um, but nobody really does this alone. No, no, it's impossible to to do it at any scale, to, to have, I mean, we all have a big mission of, we want to help so many people with, with all these things, but you can't do it alone, you know, and just, just had a, a launch of my powerful introvert program a couple of months ago. And I ended up having five of my partners volunteer to be bonus guests for my program. And I was blown away that they would do that for me. And the fact of having JV partners help to promote my my launch, I could not have done that on my own. I was playing in a small sandbox by myself before, but this this really was an eye opener for me, and I love it. Well, and the world of JV partners, I think, is such a great example. And uh, you know, I'm all about JV partners and affiliates and referring business to to each other and all of that. And it's the ultimate collaboration, in, in, in my opinion. Like, let's raise everyone together. And when we do that, there's no competition, right? Yeah. We're, we're all yeah. just supporting each other. And I love that. Um, well, and, and the thing is, too, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, but, no, I'll do it. Um, it. It's not just about that. It's about how partners can help our guests, our clients, that we can't help them, but we know someone who can. And the bottom line is it's helping our clients or students or whoever have an even better experience in what they need. And, you know, so because we're not always, oh, I can do that. I can I can do that for you. Somebody else has a different way or, or a better thing that's going to help them excel in business, then send them to them. I think it's a great way to have them grow. Absolutely. So I know we're uh, running short on time, but I want to make sure that I, I do ask you these two questions because it, it, it's vital to, I think, helping our audience in the pursuit of their growth and in, in their businesses and themselves. So first question I want to ask you uh, is about thought leaders. And in, in for me, I've had I've been blessed with so many great mentors and teachers and and, and guides who have really helped me in my journey. Um, who would be the one that you would recommend or maybe who's been the most impactful to you? Oh, that's a tough question to ask. Actually, I've been following Brendan Burchard for quite a while now. I really like how he incorporates personal development into business and how it is just all part of who you are every day, not just who you are in front of clients. And I, he inspires me all the time. And he's got amazing energy. I always feel energized after watching him. Right? I am so envious of his energy sometimes. And like the way he comes out on stage, and being, you know, slightly introverted myself, I don't come out on stage and dance. And he's just like up there and he's clapping and he's got the energy. And you know, I've heard the behind the scenes of how he gets himself amped up for that. Because I don't mm -hmm. think it came naturally to him either. But I find him to be so incredibly inspirational. And he's amazing on video. I mean, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so so I think great recommendation. And um, so the other question I want to ask you is about books. So so, so much great information is uh, written in books that is helpful. I've read a lot. I'm always looking for more to read. Well, you know, what's that book that you feel like our audience should go and check out and could potentially be a game changer for them. And again, there's lots of books, but the one that comes to mind as you ask that is Marie Forleo's book, Everything is Figure Outable, because it helped me through some big life changes in these past few years. And, and really, she's actually hilarious with some of her relatable examples, but it just gives you hope that even when things seem like there's, there's just no way, everything is figure outable. It is figure outable. I love that. And um, I, I think you're the first guest that recommended that particular book, and we'll make sure that we link to it. And 
I haven't read it, but it sounds amazing. So I think I'll check that out as well. So Lorraine, thank you so much for sharing your story. I know it's been a short amount of time here, but we've, 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 we've covered a lot of ground and, uh, and hopefully we've inspired everyone to kind of tune in to that energy around you. Is it yours? Maybe it's not yours. Maybe it's some, someone else's. And then also, can you take it that other step and actually use that, have, you know, have it serve you somehow uh, in, in your, in your business, in your life, whatever it is that you're trying to do. So, so Lorraine, thank you. And and like, I'm going to say to our listeners, if you've been inspired by anything that we've said here today, please do reach out to Lorraine. Um, Lorraine, how do they do that? Where do they find you? Well, they can find me on my website. It's simplehealingarts.com. And there's even a downloadable there for them, a, a, the Introvert Roadmap, Five Ways to Tap into Your True Power. But uh, thank you so much, Chuck. This has been a, a really great chat with you. We, I feel we have so much more we can cover. <laughs> and, and maybe there's going to be a part two to this at, at some point. And I know, I know we will be... Uh, uh, following up behind the scenes as well, for sure. And uh, Lorraine, thank you so much. If you were to, uh, if we we're to end this episode with just you giving just one last word of wisdom or piece of advice to leave our listeners with, what would you say to them? I would say, don't let your negative thoughts dictate your actions. You can shift your mindset to focus on the outcome you want, and because that will help you discover that there's opportunities from everything that you learn and think. So don't let those negative thoughts dictate your actions. Brilliant. My really takeaway. well said. And I think that that is a great way to end this episode. Lorraine, thank you for being my guest. And to our audience, thank you so much for tuning in. Please do connect with Lorraine. We have all her links beneath this, uh, beneath this video or on the podcast in the show notes. And uh, until next time, keep moving forward and keep living your dream and and pursuing that big business mission that that thing that you're you're trying your passion project that is so desperately needed by the world and uh, and make that Im big impact you were always meant to make. And in the meantime, uh, make sure you come back and listen to our next amazing episode. And until next time, uh, be awesome, everybody. Thanks, Chuck. Mm -hmm.